In ancient Greece, a long time ago, life was different from how it is now. For a very long time, before about 3,000 years ago, they didn't have a big focus on buying and selling things. Heroes were all about honor and being respected, not money. They got gifts, won treasure, and sometimes took it from others as a way to show their power. But then, around 400 BC, something big happened. They started using small shiny things called coins. These were mainly used to pay soldiers, settle fines, and handle government business. As time went on, more cities began making their own coins to show that they were independent. The most important place where people gathered, called the Agora, started to become not just a place for discussing important things, but also a place where people traded every day. Coins became common for normal people to use in their transactions. This marked a big change in how they thought about wealth and value, shifting towards a focus on money and commerce. When commercial businesses started, there were many problems with debts, like the ones seen in ancient places like Mesopotamia and Israel. People who couldn't pay their debts ended up being owned by those who did. This caused big problems, like groups of people rising up and demanding a way out of debt, usually through forgiveness or making it easier to pay. In Greece, the story was a little different. They didn't stick to regular forgiveness like the Near East did. Instead, Greek cities made laws to stop forced labor due to debt, and sometimes they stopped it altogether. To avoid such problems again, they decided to expand by sending poor kids to found new cities far away. Many places along the coast became Greek colonies, and they became busy spots of trade. This change in how slaves worked brought huge shifts in Greek society. First, even people with not much money could now participate in politics and culture, making them feel more like full citizens. But this growth of democracy also caused problems for the rich, who started to find ways to distance themselves from the new, more inclusive society, saying that it was morally flawed. When we look at ancient Greece, around 500 BC, a big debate was all about money. The rich, or aristocrats, saw money as something bad and connected to bad behavior. They believed an honorable person should get what they needed from their land without ever touching money. In reality, they knew they couldn't do that, but still, they tried to show they were different from the everyday people who traded things like food or charcoal in markets. For example, aristocrats preferred to give fancy gifts, like golden cups and prizes for sports games, during big celebrations like weddings or funerals. They didn't like the idea of selling things like sausages or buying things for entertainment like gambling, because they thought it was not proper. They also liked to have top-quality women, like educated courtesans, who were not like the common prostitutes who worked in brothels near the town square. These brothels were sometimes supported by the government to help its men with their desires. The aristocrats valued giving gifts, being generous, and reputation above all else instead of focusing on plain business deals, which they thought were dirty and less honorable. In some places, like where they lived, things were a little different from Mesopotamia. The rich and fancy people didn't like how normal folks seemed to care too much about business stuff. They thought it wasn't fancy enough. On the other hand, the common people were like a broken record. They wanted to stop some fancy stuff the rich did but also tried to copy it. Take pederasty, or grown men loving boys, for example. This was seen as a big part of being part of the important, rich group. It was like a big welcome party into their special club. But the group that made decisions didn't like this because they thought it was trying to upset things. So, they made it illegal for men to do this with other men. Surprisingly, even though it was against the rules, this special love became a secret habit that everyone seemed to be doing, whether they were part of the rich group or not. It's like a strange mix of trying to say no and saying yes all at once. In ancient Greece, people cared a lot about being respected, especially men. This idea came from rich people who wanted to be different from the way business and marketplaces worked. Women in Greece, though, didn't have the same chances. Before Socrates, it was important for women to be seen as good and pure, focusing on things like staying pure, being modest, and staying inside the house. If they got involved in public life, they were seen as not proper, 
almost like a bad woman or a prostitute. This was different from what happened in countries like Persia and Syria, where veiling was more common. In Greece, even though they were a democratic city, women were asked to wear veils when they went out, even though that might not seem like what we think of as a symbol of Western freedom. It's important to remember that culture and traditions can change a lot over time. Money started as a symbol of respect and dignity. It was something that showed you were trustworthy and honest. Saying you could buy someone's honor with money used to be a very bad thing to say because it implied their character had no value. It's like saying someone's honor isn't strong enough to resist money, which is a huge disrespect. In ancient times, men sometimes got captured, usually by enemies, and were held as prisoners for ransom. Just like women in Middle Eastern stories, they had to go through difficult times before being set free. To prove they were slaves or ransomed, their captors would mark them, often by branding them with something that represented the money they were paid. It was a way of reminding everyone that the person had lost their freedom, and their worth was now reduced to that same money. Today, we can imagine a situation where a kidnapper takes an American person and demands a ransom. Instead of a real brand, they might jokingly burn a dollar sign on the person's forehead as a symbol, even though it's not a common practice. This anecdote shows how money can change the way people perceive honor and personal worth. So, the question of why money represents degradation isn't simple, even if slavery played a role. When people talk about degraded human beings in ancient times, like the Greek slaves, heroism was noted. In fact, even in the famous story of Agamemnon and Achilles, their dispute was about honor and being remembered as a hero, even if it meant the possibility of losing that status themselves, as war could turn anyone into a slave. Slaves were seen as so degraded because they had lost their freedom, but it wasn't just about the brutality of slaves. It was about the idea of honor and the risks warriors took. If you were a warrior like Odysseus or an emperor like Valerian, your worth and honor were tied to your ability to fight, and the fact that you could potentially lose absolutely everything, even your life and status, made that a defining feature of your honor. In this context, a warrior's honor wasn't just about being victorious but also about being prepared to face the risks that came with it, like being captured and losing all that was valuable, including potentially your own honor and even your life. This connection between risk, honor, and vulnerability made money, which symbolized material wealth, seem like a loss of what it truly meant to be a hero in their culture. When money became a big part of daily life and trade, it did cause changes in the way people thought about social structures. The Greek aristocrats, who lived fancy lives, sometimes complained about how money seemed to upset the traditional order. They thought it was unfair because anyone could now use money to buy things that were once only for the rich like fancy clothes or entertainment. Before, their high society status was what set them apart, but with money, anyone could access those same luxuries. They were used to thinking of themselves as different from the common people because they couldn't buy what everyone else could. For example, the fancy parties they threw had performers like musicians and athletes. But the truth was, they couldn't deny their attraction to the things that money could buy, even if they tried to pretend it wasn't true. The most universal and desirable thing of all was money, which could be used for both expensive pursuits like their own hobbies and for simple needs of everyday people. This realization sometimes made them feel uncomfortable because their high-class activities required the same money as more basic items, like food or perfumes, making them more similar to the people they once thought were beneath them. When money appeared, it made things fair for everyone. Everyone, rich or poor, wanted the same thing money. But things got even more important. People really needed money, not just wanted. In old times, like in Homeric stories, everyone was assumed to have basic things like food, shelter, and clothes because they were a part of life. A person without any possessions could still find a place as a helper in a rich person's home, and even slaves had enough to survive. The change became clear when thinking about prostitutes. Some were slaves, but others were just poor. They became a symbol of how the need for enough basic things had become a big deal. 
People were so worried about depending on others for their survival that they started valuing self-sufficiency in their homes, which was a key idea in ancient Greek culture. This fear of being controlled by others' decisions and wants was a big reason behind their focus on independent living. In ancient Greek city-states like Athens, men took special care to keep their wives and daughters away from the market and its challenges. They didn't use them as debt guarantees like in the Middle East. In Athens, daughters of free citizens couldn't work as prostitutes officially. This meant women stayed mostly unseen and not involved in major decisions about money or politics. Debt was a big problem, usually affecting the debtors themselves. Men accused each other of selling their bodies for money when they were young, using that as an excuse to take away their rights as citizens. This shows how power dynamics were changing, with older ways of social hierarchy, like great men having servants, and older forms of everyone looking out for each other, like family helping each other, started breaking down. Instead, these aspects were becoming more focused on the family unit,